everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. I hope you guys all enjoy. If you can tell though, compared to last episode, which by the way did amazing, thank you all for the great comments and responses, uh, but that kind of unenergetic Jake, the slow paced Jake, did really well. And I, wa I want to thank you guys for that, but I also want to apologize because hyped up Jake, energetic Jake is now back. My caffeinated beverage is right over there, which I will continue to drink throughout the entire episode. But as always, guys, all today's stories are timestamped in the description. And let's get into the big one though, all about flip side tactics, making huge changes just a few days ago, and now even bigger changes changes coming their way and very unfortunate news as apparently Blade has left Flipside Tactics. Uh, he was going to coach there if you guys saw their post last week. They're now down to two players on that team. That's just going to be Markalov alongside Waylander. Alongside that though it did leave them with Lollipop and World Edit on the transfer list. If you guys obviously you probably know this the transfer list pretty much being benched. They're not going to play for Flipside in the future and they're going to try and trade those players away. So yes just two players left Markalov and Waylander and allegedly it was going to be Blade their former IGL stepping down from the IGL role to take up the coaching role and they also announced on top of that do major time come major time they'll try and find three replacements for the roster which made sense you know blade notoriously enough in the cis scene a pretty good igl although the, the past performances for flip side obviously over the past four to five months not too good he was definitely one of those sought after igls for quite some time so it looked kind of like a solidified future for flip side if they found three other players but now with this being announced of course blade going to gamut gaming to of course couch for them this is a big shot in the face of flip side tactics and first i want to brush over this very fast this can be a big pickup for Gamut Gaming right in time for the major. Leave a comment down below. What do you guys think about this? This might just be exactly what they need right in time for that major coming around in just over a month. Some good time to practice with the team. I'm very excited to see what he can actually bring to that roster, but the flip side of the coin, I, I say that unironically enough, the flip side to me now does seem to be a dead team for the prolonged future, and again, they're not going to be qualifying for any tournaments, any LAN events, going to anywhere, playing anywhere. Their sole focus for the next two to three months are going to be finding players to actually rejoin that roster, and as of right now, for the CIS scene, one of the most consistent legend, one of the most consistent teams in CIS history is now, in my opinion, dead in the water. But also in rumor news, I think from now on, for all future episodes, guys, when I start off a segment by saying rumor news, you guys can assume as of right now it's speculation. But as of right now, as well, we do have based on Decay's reports out there. Apparently, Virtus Pro looking at replacing Morels. If you guys know Morels, he's currently been a stand-in player for that Virtus Pro roster ever since Snacks did leave last month. He's been a stand-in player for that team right now for the past few weeks at several events and has pretty obviously been probably their worst player. Not to be any offense uh, to the guy, but apparently Virtus Pro, to no surprise, is looking to replace him. But also, according to Decay, it will be an AGO member known as Snatchy. Now, Snatchy, if he were to go full-time, would of course join that Virtus Pro roster and hopefully be a bit better than Morels. But also on top of that, we even have the Virtus Pro CEO hinting at apparently this being the go-to. Now, I also want to clarify as well, this CEO as well, uh, the Virtus Pro CEO has lied to us several times on Twitter before, especially with a lot of Decay's rumors out there. But he did take the Twitter as well to make several comments about this. But as well as his second one, though, more importantly, he said he could not respond to Decay's article because he was looking at top 20 teams on HLTV. Now, speculation even further, guys. You go to, of course, the HLTV rankings and guess who's number 20? Team AGO. Guess who's on AGO? Snatchy. Decay might be right here. And people might be saying as well, even further speculation. Yeah, he said top 20, though. I'm trying to make sense of this and actually put into words for you. If he, if he was actually looking at teams that were further in the top 20, he would have said top 15, top 10, top 5, but the fact that he said top 20 makes you maybe speculate he's looking at teams that are anywhere from the ranked 15 to 20, and of course AGO is ranked number 20. But anyway, that's just rumors out there. It would not surprise any of us though to of course see Virtus Pro changes before the major because Morels has been the obvious statistical struggle of the entire roster. Sometimes I watch back my videos and I realize that the first few stories I say are just such gibberish sometimes. I know a lot of it makes sense, and but a lot of you guys from outside perspective, if you're new viewers, I really wonder how you guys make it this far in the videos, but this is honestly where the good stories do come So obviously next up in our CSK news guys We did have scream take the Twitter if you guys did watch of course the face it miners out there for the European minor It was team left out consisting of, of, of scream sixer Kiyoshima um, XMS and Haji they actually did decently well at the minor but failed to make the major qualifiers uh, Speculation out there beforehand was of course was this roster ever going to stick together scream took to Twitter though to announce his mini vacation to of course kind of like, figure out what his future will be I do honestly Honestly, think though of that roster, the left out roster, there were just two players who stood out far above the rest. Of course, Scream being one of them, Kiyoshima being the next. I honestly, if I had to say going forward, based off the minor statistics and how that how that whole thing played out, people like Haji and Sixer and XMS just had a lot of matches where they did struggle. I'm really curious to see in the French scene. I know Scream is Belgian, don't get mad at me, guys, but in the French scene, which he prolongingly and, and you know majority of the time does play in, I'm very curious to see what roster does come of this and if you actually stick it out with Kiyoshima because I love the guy, I love the duo. 
duo there. And I'm really curious to see as well what organizations give these guys a chance and actually sign them with some other players. But also talking about the French scene out there, of course, we had Nell leak some rumors of, of, about some offers going Zai Wu's way. If you guys don't know Zai Wu, then you probably should Google him or YouTube search him. Uh, one of the best French upcoming players currently in the scene. I think it was actually him who had back to back 70 bombs in best of three series just not too long ago in some French tournament, which I did cover. And I actually got the chance to talk to this guy. I don't know why, but he responds to me every now and again on Twitter. I can confirm everything that Nell did say. Apparently, his buyout will be $100,000. That contract with him in AAA ending in January of 2019. That gives him, of course, five to six months to field some offers. Many teams out there, I'm sure you guys are aware, the 24 big teams out there, at least 16 of them, uh, of course, being, I guess you could say, top tier teams, are currently in the major. Probably not looking to sign the guy anytime before that, but also I have talked to him as well, and it does seem, I can confirm to all of you guys, I'm not going to show you any screenshots, that what Nell has said is correct. He will be fielding offers and people, many teams out there are very eager to actually pay that $100,000 buyout. The real question is now, what team will actually pull the trigger? After talking to him though, it does seem anytime in September or October, we can expect him to probably be bought out by some team out there. And again, big question mark as to who that will be, but I'm very excited to see where Zaiwu ends up in the future. He was, of course, before he got um, one of his, his degrees over there in the French scene, he was one of the more speculative players to come up in the French scene. And he had a crazy offer from Envious. I think the offer was actually $20,000 or $15,000 a month, which he did reject to actually finish his French degree. So can it be cool to see where Zaiwu ends up? Leave comments down below. Where do you guys think it's going to be? I don't think Envious is going to make a comeback anytime soon, so it's going to be really cool to see what team it actually is. And I will leave the female controversy CSGO news discussion debate thingy for the very back half of the episode. If you guys are curious about that, we're going to have a, we're going to have a long heart-to-heart -heart discussion. I, by, by long, I mean probably a couple minutes about the recent signing of Juliano and Zaz and Vilga's team. That was actually their signing to the Turkish team known as Besiktas. I'll talk about that in a second here, but very lastly, I did miss in the VAC ban. If you guys were curious about this, thanks to my friend TGC, who sent me the information about the $30,000 account that that actually was VAC banned throughout our largest VAC wave in CSGO history just last week. So to kind of showcase as well, I don't have any really cool pictures of the inventory itself, but it actually was a $30,000 CSGO inventory. It had the number one float factory new souvenir Dragon Lore, the number one float M4A4 Poseidon, also a stat track a factory new M9 Sapphire, other great skins on there. So kind of a cool thing to see. I, I guess I kind of say cool, but also very sad. A $30,000 inventory was the largest inventory uh, to actually be banned last week throughout that largest ban. We're almost 100 thousand counts saw VAC, ban, uh, VAC bans actually added to them. So that was some pretty crazy news. But also on top of that, I do want to finish off today's episode by talking about female CSGO. And also, uh, despite recent occurrences out there, we had a, actually the female festival happening recently and the decline apparently in female CSGO events, which has not really been made aware to the public, but I kind of just was thinking about this lately uh, as a good talking point. Because we recently saw what was one of the best female teams out there in 2016 and 2017. Now I say 2016, 2017 because of, as of recently, it's probably been Dignitas female to be your best roster as well as some other random rosters out there we have not seen much of Juliana Zaz and Vilga even recently in CSGO actually I reached out to Juliana on Twitter and she did clarify I wasn't really sure if it was actually correct that entire team when they formerly were of res gaming or the res female roster they played two times in the last six months two times, two events, didn't place too well either one of them, and I thought I was very curious. You know, we saw them traveling a lot, we saw her in a lot of Mojo, uh, a lot of Mojo's videos, they had that Q&A video together, and it made me wonder how a team like that could possibly be signed to such a large club out there. It was actually a Turkish football club, like I said previously known as Besiktas, who signed the entire roster, and a pretty big announcement as well, because it was very hard to see why anyone would want to sign a roster that hasn't played more than two times in six months. And there was a lot of controversy out there in terms of some smaller for uh, forum comments that said, you know, why would you why would you sign an ESCA Mountain Dew League guy team who plays every single weekend when you could sign a female team who plays two times in six months? And I did want to clarify as well in the past, we've seen these female rosters actually play quite a bit, but yes, it's pretty obvious and they're not going to deny the fact either there's a pretty big marketing tactic to signing a female roster. And what I mean by that is yes, these girls are obviously very good at CSGO, but when it comes to being stacked up against male competition, of course they might fall short in most instances, but there's a lot more in terms of what they're worth besides what they actually play in terms in terms of tournaments and results out there. And again, I also do want to clarify, I've talked to Juliano in the past, throughout 2016 and 2017, these girls were actually going to a lot more events. Actually, I think it was 2017, the year for them, they were actually part of, I think it was Team Dynasty, then to Team Res. That entire year, they traveled to probably 15 plus events. So these girls have been very active in the past, but it's also just a very curious topic to talk about. And I'm not really sure where this is going. Leave a comment down below. What do you guys think about this? A team, a female team who has rarely played in the past six months, and again, from 
the next year or so. I'm not really sure what their event schedule is. I reached out to Giuliano about comment about this, about what their schedule will be for the rest of 2018 and going into 2019 in terms of how many events they'll play. But I thought it was very cool because it does show you one side of CSGO you don't see too much and the fact that these female rosters have marketability. They actually have worth beyond their results. They don't always have to play to actually be signed. So yes, it's definitely a cool thing, but I also kind of wanted a question as well, is female CSGO dying? So I actually tweet out as well a little questionnaire about when's the last time you guys actually watched a female CSGO event? I know personally, me and myself speaking, I think it was actually a year ago for Katowice when it was Dignitas Female, I think won that event as well. That was the last time I actually stumbled across a female CSGO tournament and it made me question, are these things promoted enough? Are they actually shown enough? And why don't we hear more about female CSGO? And it, it's just been a really weird question that I've had in my head for a long time. And again, this is a really weird segment. I feel like I'm just rambling on and on. But what do you guys think about this? Besiktas, the Turkish football club, signed a female roster, even though they hadn't played too much in the last six months. I thought it was pretty cool, but also might be worrying for the future of female CSGO. Okay, no joke. I think I actually drank too much caffeine because I this, ep this episode was... Oh man, you never just have an episode where you just don't know how people are going to react to it. I, I didn't want to apologize ahead of time. That was a, a weird episode of CSGO News. I will be back here in a couple of days, guys, sharing more news with all of you. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the constant support. I will see you all then. But also, here's a life update for you guys, if you if you care. So I'm probably going to put this at the end of the video because you, uh, you guys probably don't care about this. But just some real life update stuff as well. I'm still, of course, in my own apartment. And uh, this morning when I woke up, I was just so sad because I walked into the kitchen uh, pretty early this morning you know to get some breakfast like I usually do and I look at the windowsill and then I feel something on my feet just like some you know a soft like tingling thing and I look down trails of ants I look at the windowsill over there just ants everywhere and I don't leave food out or any of that kind of stuff I don't do anything that would really, really, really attract ants and so apparently here in Las Vegas or just Nevada in general ants during this kind of season always like to come inside that kind of thing and so luckily enough I came home today and I called the pest control people. I didn't think they were gonna show up until for like another week or so, because you have to usually make an appointment. But by some miracle, I don't know why I'm thanking you guys, by some miracle though, I come home today and the army is just all slaughtered. They're all dead, every one of them. I'm just hoping it stays this way. So thanks to the pest control guy, I, I, I don't know why I'm posting this in a video, but just there's trails everywhere on the floor. I have to go clean up now because the pest control guy will come in and kill them and of course hopefully prevent them in the future, but they're not gonna of course wipe up the masses of death around here, all the dead ants. I'm gonna go do that and edit this video, but thanks for watching. I don't, bye guys.